Hi there. Hope you all are vaccinated, have taken the booster shots, and are exercising due diligence and common sense in your daily routine. In this presentation series, we will make an attempt to review endocrine system. This is intended for the technical life underwriters because they are committed to lifelong learning and education. Field partners are the key link between the customers and the technical life underwriters. So they are also welcome to join. Customers, you, I, we all are customers. Even if we are not the field partners, we are not the technical life underwriters, we all are customers. Think this way, life insurance policy provides living and or death benefits depending upon the type of products that you may buy from companies out there in the industry. That is there, but even beyond that, have you ever thought that let's say your company where you have applied for the life insurance tells you that they need your blood and urine. Think this way, it's free. You can check your current liver enzymes, your blood glucose level, your lipid profile, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, so on and so forth. Unfortunately, in the industries, uh, technical underwriters have had multiple cases of being postponed or declined due to elevated blood sugar because the customers are unaware that they are diabetic newly discovered diabetic. Just one example, maybe you are drinking too much alcohol given this current situation in last two years, your liver enzymes are elevated and you don't know. The point is, take the advantage of having free blood and urine if and when asked by the home office underwriters or your field partner or the agent broker tells you to do so. I know we don't all have the medical background, so I will try not to use the medical jargons and uh, in-depth anatomy and physiology. I will try to keep it short and simple to maintain the interest of our customers as well as our field partners because they do sell variety of products, not only the life, but they sell auto, home, PNC, you name it, various financial products. So, and I'll throw in between few things to preserve the interest of technical life underwriters. So as we begin, the endocrine system, homeostasis is something that you may not have heard, but simply speaking, let me describe this way, that we have electrolytes, sodium, potassium, salt, glucose, ions in our body, right? Well, all is normal, everything is fine and the internal environment is properly maintained, then body is in a homeostasis stage. So there is no disorder, no disease, right? We are not at the, um, we are at the ease, we are in order. So there is no disease, there is no disorder. So that is homeostasis. As we move on with this presentation series, you will know more about the homeostasis. Positive and negative feedback. So I am here in Chicago. I can see right behind uh, my backyard and the pond covered with snow, uh, temperature in minus degrees, depending upon where you are. So we turn on our thermostat, we set it up such that at a 68 or 70, whatever your preference is, if the temperature goes down outside, then the thermostat kicks in, the heater goes on. Whatever we have decided accordingly, it remains that way. And then it automatically shuts off. Just like that. God has created our body such that through endocrine system, through endocrine system, various organs, and we'll get into those details, 
are releasing hormones. What they do is they try to maintain the reasonable right amount of homeostasis or the internal environment. That way we feel comfortable and our glucose, salt, sodium, potassium, everything remains in order, intact. If different organs that release the hormones are releasing the adequate amount of hormone, so they are adequately released, stored and reached out to the specific cells. If there are, for 10 different reasons, if there are any disorders, if there is excess amount of release of these hormones or if there is any deficiency of these hormones, then it may lead to a variety of disorders that we will be looking into. Like you might have heard about hyperthyroid, hypothyroid, hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, hypogonadism, hypergonadism. What is that? Hypo is underactive, hyper is overactive, right? So we will get into that. Endocrine system is different than exocrine system. For example, in our body we have nervous system, immune system, and we have covered variety of different systems through different presentation series. But let's say outside the street to my home there is a pipe that is connected that supplies the water. Nervous system is just like that. It's all wired. It has some tangible connections. Nervous system is quick. Or you can use the analogy of uh, traditional phone, landline phone, wire. Whereas endocrine system is like Wi-Fi, wireless. So what happens, the different organs from hypothalamus, pituitary gland in the uh, brain area all the way down to the gonads, ovaries and testicles different organs are releasing different hormones and they directly go into the bloodstream as opposed to other systems like a nervous system that has a wired connection their neurons, their network is different Whereas endocrine system is like Wi-Fi, like a smartphone. It directly releases the hormones that goes into the blood. And of course, we are just scratching the surface as we dive deep. And I have broken down into different segments that way you can easily follow. So we'll get into those details. So this is just an attempt to take a look at the endocrine and the nervous system they have the complex network of nerves and cells wired here the hormones are released by the glands directly into the blood into our body the key components the key traditionally speaking the key glands that we see in the medical literature in the endocrine system are thyroid pituitary hypothalamus uh, pancreas, ovaries, testicles, and we'll get into all those details. Here the response is slow, the nervous system, the response is quick. And we can understand why, because if there is a, um, a fear, stress, anxiety, for example, nervous system has to uh, step in, quickly respond, and then once the danger is gone, you are restored back to homeostasis, right? Here, what should be your height and weight, uh, things like that, for example. That is something controlled by the endocrine system. So it has a slower response, but it lasts long, okay? There are various details. Uh, if you want to learn more, definitely take a look at those again at your convenience. Nervous system, everything is wired. Endocrine system, hypothalamus, pituitary gland, thymus, we have covered in different uh, presentation series. 
Traditionally, we focus on hypothalamus, pituitary gland. I will touch base a little bit as we move on about the uh, pineal gland. Then we have thyroid. Adrenal glands, they are like our two kidneys, right about those. They are adjacent to the kidney. Renal means kidney, adjacent to the kidney. Suprarenal, different terms are used for that. Then we have pancreas. As a matter of fact, when we compare and then we have ovaries and testes depending upon male or female. As a matter of fact, pancreas does both. Pancreas has exocrine and endocrine both functions because they release the enzymes or juices in the surroundings uh, using the exocrine that is wired or pipes or physical network through connections and yet it is also and we'll get into more details how it is also acting as endocrine system okay so seeing is believing this is just to get our feet wet as we are starting the endocrine system so try to see where these different contributors are located in our body so when we talk about pituitary gland you know where are they located or hypothalamus or pineal gland where are they located then we have thyroid and parathyroid gland uh, thyroid gland we know uh, parathyroid if you uh, see the back side of the thyroid there are four parathyroid glands uh, we will get into that thymus we will not cover in this endocrine uh, we have covered in different presentation series uh, this is your pancreas the two kidneys right above two kidneys are the adrenal glands testicles and ovaries depending upon the sex so these are the key contributors the key glands that releases the hormones that goes directly into the blood and just like how the agents or the brokers or the field partners and the underwriters and the customers they work together hypothalamus and uh, pituitary gland they dominate starts from the hypothalamus releases certain hormones works with the pituitary gland pituitary gland per se also releases certain hormones working together they both just like the agents or the field partners or the brokers and the underwriters they serve the customers the thyroid glands, parathyroid glands, pancreas, adrenal glands and gonads or the ovaries and testicles so there is a teamwork in the anatomy that we see here and if you have the appetite to know the fancy medical names of the different hormones they are right here so as I was saying, hypothalamus releases these hormones, thyroid and parathyroid, they do T3, T4, calcitonin, parathyroid, PTH, so on and so forth. So I am not going to go through all, but please feel free to take a look at it at your convenience. And these are the different key players, they release different hormones. They work together to maintain the internal stable environment. Any deficiency leads to hypo, any surplus leads to hyper activity in our body. It could be related to thyroid, it could be related to pancreas, it could be related to gonads. As simple as that, right? And you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure those details out. Now, endocrine, paracrine and autocrine just to give you an idea are kind of like three ways we can categorize the hormones for example when there is a far distance um, hypothalamus or pituitary gland are working with the gonads ovaries or testicles is an example of endocrine hormones uh, paracrine hormones are like hypothalamus working with pituitary gland for example so they are kind of adjacent to each other 
or autocrine hormones are something so in proximity like cell to cell for example pancreas does both exocrine and endocrine right so pancreas could be considered as an example when they release certain things it could be labeled as autocrine hormones now imagine in your family or in this world how many of us are there just in our body there are roughly 100 trillion cells so how do they communicate so for example let me go back see here so at the top we have uh, hypothalamus pituitary gland pineal gland all the way at the bottom we have ovaries and testicles what happens everybody is trying to communicate and work together with each other right how would body know that what has to happen and when right because it could be chaotic i repeat 100 trillion cells in our body so the research so